Hello, my name is Benji and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we return once again to the old but new hybrid miniatures game of Blood Bowl. Yet this time we're doing our level best at pretending to be good enough at the game to holler 10 slices of wisdom straight in your ear brains about this somewhat bonkers game. Yes, I may have procured some, aka a lot of advice from one of my learned friends on this subject, yet these are still my words, and this is still my voice, and that's what you came here for, right? So who are these tips for? Well, primarily beginners wanting to know how to not get crumped all over the place for 16 turns every game, but we'll also bleed some intermediate guidance in here too, leaving some room for potential sequels to this here catalogue of goodness. It should also be said that these tips are valid for both Tabletop Blood Bowl and the digital kind found on multiple platforms. So enough with the waffle, let's get our counting shoes on and bowl from 1 to 10. Number 1. The most important point to wrap your head around is that Blood Bowl is a game of risk. You are playing against it as much as you're playing against your opponent. Think of risk not as that square person's ball game, but as a physical embodiment of someone that's out to get you. Weighing up risk versus reward is what this game is all about. For example, if there's a ball sitting on the floor waiting to be picked up, but you literally cannot wait to tuck into a little handbags, then take a breath, locate your inner chi, and pick that pigskin up. Trust me, nothing will troll you more in a game of Blood Bowl than risk itself. Your opponent won't even come close. Number 2. One way to mitigate that risk is to roll as few dice as possible and always, always save the most difficult rolls until last. Most notably those are going to be block rolls and other than re-rolls you don't get take backs even in a game this crooked. The questions you should be asking are, does rolling dice help you or are you just doing it because you can? And what are my odds of success? Ordinarily you should be positioning your players so that you're rolling two block dice every time. A one dice roll is fraught with danger and in normal circumstances that's going to result in a one in three chance of a turnover. So save these until the very end if you must. Now it's a subtler point but also don't forget for example the difference between two dice block rolls for those players with the block skill and those without and take the easy route first. Number 3. Compile a sequence of things to do each turn in order. We cover the majority of these in this list but number one will always be standing up any players that you can. Forget this one trick and before you know it you're turning the ball over and cursing yourself for all those missed tackle zones. One key thing to consider when standing players up though is to nominate who you're going to blitz with. Considering the extra spaces to stand up, if a down player has got a clear path and can make an impactful tackle then factor that into your thinking and don't rue the fact that you just automatically stood everyone bolt upright. Number 4. As a general rule, play a safety or sweeper or whatever you want to call it in your backfield so that you've always got someone to act as a last ditch defender. Even stalling and creating a tackle zone may be enough to slow the opposition down long enough for your teammates to get back and help. There's only finite space where the meat of the action is, more often than not in the general vicinity of the ball carrier. So it's not too much bother at all to sacrifice one player to this safety valve of a roll. Especially against agile teams that can slip and slide in and out of tackle zones. In that instance you also might want to consider whether you can afford to have two players back there. Number 5. Don't always follow up after a tackle or a push. If it's going to help you with remaining tackles and stack the odds in your favour then fine it's probably the right play. But if you leave space between you and your victim, you can only get tackled back by that same player who's probably furious at you for the crap you pulled last turn if they use their solitary blitz to do so. Or of course they go full coward and get someone else to do it. But then you know you've got the buggers tilted. To be fair you can only plan for so many eventualities and so as to not overthink this if you're the team that tackles the most, you might want to keep those gaps closed. 
If you're the more agile team, then consider leaving some space. Number six, do not go for it, which we're now calling rush. Those one or two extra spaces, especially with the ball carrier, unless you absolutely positively have to. Are you in a position to protect your ball carrier on your opponent's next turn? Then just chill. Nothing feels more like having your pants pulled down in public than stacking it at the one yard line. Tell that voice in the back of the head that's whispering, do it. Think of the star player points to kindly take a run and jump off a cliff. Actually, no, bad advice as it'll take you with him. Just satisfy yourself with cussing him out. That should do the trick. Number seven. Always keep an eye on the clock if you're playing competitively and the turn counter no matter how you're playing. Now it's a fine thing and quite cathartic I agree for bashy teams to start kicking 10 bells out of everything that moves and that doesn't wear your team's colours. But at some point you do need to score and that can often take one, two or even three turns to get in the end zone. So plan accordingly before the reset button at half time and the final whistle brings the hammer down and bites you in the arse. Number 8. Blood Bowl is a game that despite being wildly over the top thematically actually rewards a measured and methodical approach to scoring and winning. In that spirit it's actually not good practice to score too early during your possession. The obvious reason for that is that you then give more time for your opponent to trot back down the other end when they get the ball. This is a game that is arguably balanced towards a 1-1 draw as its outcome. You score when you receive the ball for the half and they do on theirs. So always be making decisions that tip those very small scales in your favour. Number 9. For a nickel's worth of free advice, the best way to learn the fundamentals of the game is to pick a tier 1 team. Now there have always been good teams, not so good teams, bad teams and absolutely tripe stunty teams to choose from. Mostly because of the player's stat lines and skills, but this has all been formalised now. So pick yourself one of the top dogs and get in as many games as you can. Now I'm not sure this logic always applies to games, because the more forgiving it is, the more lazy you might become. But because you need to be so methodical and limit the number of mistakes to succeed, even at a casual level, that forgiving nature serves two positive purposes. One is that you won't constantly be chasing the ball, so you should have roughly equal playing time attacking and defending. But also no one likes losing consistently when they're trying to get into a game. So do yourself a favour, don't make life hard for yourself just for the sake of it and pick a decent team. Number 10. Saving the most fun for last, do not forget to foul if it's appropriate. Not only is it amusing and in the spirit of the game, but it can, on occasion, do you a right favour in the process. One rule to apply though, don't be risking your skill or positional players to take out a lineman. You can still get sent off, remember? In other words, try and use your least valuable player to target their most valuable player, and when things go well, savour it. Give yourself a moment to chuckle and or practice that looking pleased with yourself face. And there you go, we made it in one piece, without being sideswiped by a black orc blocker or a dumpy but feisty halfling. I'll be praying to Nuffle that you've come away from this list with A, some useful and helpful information, and B, it's stuff you can remember and apply to your next game at the table, or the computer screen. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying the BB content on the channel, because that'll only encourage me to do more. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.